thing. I was looking over his um, bio and all the things he's done. And for me, it makes me feel like our Lahui is thriving when you have a young person that has accomplished much already. And so I'm really excited to hear uh, what he has to present to tell us about his journey in teaching in this new environment of pandemic teaching and how he is using it in his classroom. And um, he has a lot of things that I'm sure he's going to share with us that are rich um, and momona. So mahalo nui ka'ivi, we're so excited to have you. Um, we will be moderating the chat and um, um, recording some questions, but I think Ka'ivi was open to having a question and answer time at the end of the session, uh, but feel free to record in the chat and we will share with him as we go. So mahalo, it's great to see you and Ka'ivi. Okay, uh, aloha nui kako. Uh, mamaki nui wa e ho'omaka me te i oli, so e hui kalo mai au, uh, ma'a nui wa no no Zoom no hoi, uh, o ke ia e mea o kua no u, no ko ho'ohana ana i Teams, a kana e, e holo mua no kako. Ke aloha nui kako, vilino mai kako, e na ho'a makamaka, mai ka o makana kala i kumukahi ako belo ana kala i lehua. Aloha nui kako, o vau o kaivi o ke kai ho'omalu o kanaloa uh, kala maku, hamakua makue. Uh, he kupa wau a kailua, uh, ua hanau ia wau i Maui, uh, o Moloka'i ka aina hanau o kuu mama, uh, o kane ohe ka aina hanau o kuu uh, makua kane. Uh, ma make nui wau e ho'omaka me ke ia oli nei. Uh, uh, ke ia oli ua haku ia e kumuhina uh, no uh, kau papa and uh, Aya ke kahi a hoa papa i loko o ke ia uh, uh, session o hoa i uh, o kau i. So, um, kamaina oe me ke ia oli a kana i mamake nui wa e hoa maka me ke ia oli. <coughs> I ko o ka pā ala mā i ke kapa i hilu hilu. Kapa i hi i hi kula na hoa i o ke ali i. No ke ali i la no pa wahi la. Kaba hine hele la o kaiyo nai. Na ue kaiwi ula oni niu hele wai. Ka niu haahula i kale o lau niu e. No kaiyo o luna kaiyo ka hano hano e. Aloha e ke ala hele o ke ana kamano i a e. A i ala e i ala e i a ho i. E a ho ina kamo ke alo mahi e, pali pakalana le i ke kilohana e, aloha e, aloha e, aloha kako e. Aloha ho kako, um, and mahalo for, uh, I guess, joining me today on this session. I'm just uh, very privileged and honored that I got asked. Um, I know you guys could have gone to another session and um, just the time you guys spent today, so. Mahalo, I just wanted to open up with this oli. Uh, again, this oli was written by uh, Kumuhina for our, uh, our class. And it's an indication of when I graduated because my classmate also wrote this oli. But uh, as maybe young as I am, I'm very privileged to just share. Uh, and again, this oli was written uh, for uh, yeah our class, our graduating class at Song Contest. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, just ho'olauna or introduce some of the people that, you know, I think I cherish a lot and have cherished over the years of my adulthood or childhood. Of course, my kupuna, uh, because uh, you know this conference kovaiwai no na kupuna. So I wanted to share my kupuna that helped to raise me and to rear me. Um, and so on my left side is my uh, my father's side. It's actually my uh, my papa reef. Um, and then his actually mom, so that's actually my uh, my great grandmother uh, and grandma Birdie. And um, and on my right side is my um, my mom's parents, Luana Akana Palapala Hamakua and Joseph Kimokeo. Uh, you guys might be ma'a with the name because the person that actually helped to open up with a beautiful mele was actually my cousin. So she actually referenced my grandma uh, this morning, but. I uh, just wanted to make sure to include the foundation of just, of course, them. And, um, you know, I also included some of my other kumu and my ohana. 
that helped to establish uh, just a kahua for me. I, of course, uh, being a Polikiano and also a Hawaiian, uh, I have to just mahalo, uh, of course, my family. Uh, so you can see them in the middle right there. Um, it's, my, it's kind of small color. My, I hope you guys can see it. Uh, just me and my siblings and my, uh, my mom and my dad. And then on the right corner side, you guys can see it's kind of this large family portrait. That's my uh, extended ohana on my mom's side from Molokai. Um, and then I also just included some of my uh, my kumu in this picture um, and just uh, some of the people that I looked up to. Um, I was privileged to voyage on Hokulea and uh, on Hikianalia and some of them being Uncle Bruce and um, Nainoa. <clears throat> and then even um, I got to meet uh, during that uh, journey a Placito, Papa Mao's son, and he's in the corner right. Uh, and while I was, of course, at Kamehameha, um, one of the leaders that I looked up to was uh, Dr. Michael Chan, uh, who, yeah, I cherish uh, dearly as a leader and as somebody I looked up to, I still look up to. And uh, in the bottom left is my uh, is my leadership advisor from high school, uh, Andrew Lai. And uh, of course, in the middle uh, is Auntie Lolana. Uh, you guys uh, might be ma'a with her uh, if you are connected with the Hawaiian language community. Uh, it was a really interesting story. I was walking through Ala Moana, uh, and uh, it was just randomly there that one day. And I see her in the food court. And uh, of course, I go over there, and I, I, I know her from um, Manoa because I, I went to school there. And while I was there, I got to just build great pilina with her. If you, if you guys are familiar with the, la, um, with the Mana Leo room, uh, you know, something that really struck me about when I saw her at Ala Moana that day. Uh, was that when I was there, uh, of course, if you guys are, you know, this is pre-COVID, right? So if you guys are walking to, into the um, Ala Moana and you guys get to see, you know, everybody in there at the food court. And, uh, you know, I know one thing that's, you know, very evident is that there's all kinds of people in there, right? You hear uh, people from Ainae, uh, Japanese, Chinese, Filipino, you know, we can name the whole uh, gamut, right? Uh, what was really uh, sh uh, striking to me was that Auntie Lolana was there, and and of course I greeted her in Olalo, and I got to kuka kuka, um, no like elua mauhola, but it struck me because we were the only two at that very moment and time, I believe I, I can't make that claim, but I believe that we're only uh, speaking Olalo during that time, right? And in this busy place called Ala Moana, Iloko Koka Kopai Aina o Hawaii, and you know, it was just a really beautiful moment. So I, I had to make sure I take a picture just to remember that because I got to see her outside of the school, you know. So anyway, just wanted to kind of establish that foundation and just to share a little bit who I am and the uh, kahua. And yeah, I just mahalo uh, kiakua manaloa for just all the pilina and the relationships that I have and, and still have, you know, and that have built me because uh, without them, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. So. Yeah, I'm just going to just share a little bit about my journey. Uh, so I graduated, as you can, can see, I was I was fortunate to be a, a leader for the class. So I got to talk at the graduation uh, when I graduated. But uh, what's kind of crazy is that, of course, all these years later, about, you know, nine, almost 10, actually 10, this is our 10th re uh, year reunion. Now I'm back teaching at the very school that I was raised in. Uh, it's a very different school, you know, and uh, still similar, but different in many ways. Uh, I think the craziest thing is as a as a younger teacher, uh, teaching with my teachers that actually taught me. Right. And so I think that uh, that's that's really what I'm grateful for, is that I have uh, relationships that still exist, you know, that that help guide me and help uh, to make me the, uh, the best person I can be and the best kumu I can be for my uh, hamana. Uh, I think the biggest change, I took a picture of it, it's kind of difficult to see. This is like my only kind of like picture of um, my classroom. This is pre-COVID. <laughs> uh, was that uh, if you're familiar with the middle school or if you're not at uh, Kapalama, uh, it's an open open learning environment. So it's a very uh, different uh, learning environment or teaching space than maybe traditional classrooms. And uh, really uh, the middle school philosophy and the teaming aspect of being grouped together and being able to coordinate in that way is a huge aspect of uh, at Kulavaina. And so uh, it's kind of hard, but you can't see it, but there's really no walls other than the one that was right there by the uh, Papa Keokel right there. 
And so that was uh, last year was my my first year teaching at the middle school, which is a huge uh, challenge in itself just for myself, because as you guys know, as an Olelo teacher, if you guys are in Olelo, Hawaii, it's kind of like a fun, <laughs> but also a uh, class that requires you to to hear and to listen. And uh, being uh, being the person that I am and maybe the energy that I create in my classroom, sometimes that was a challenge because maybe I couldn't hear or it was just being able to be very mindful of the space because of other kumu uh, and the haumana, of course, because uh, if I didn't mention this, I work with uh, eighth graders and uh, eighth graders, they're, they're on this gamut. They either want to be really cool or they don't want to engage <laughs> or they want to engage, excuse me, like they want to engage with you. They want to be, you know, they're still at that opio age where they, they find it's cool to be, a, you know, uh, have great pilina with a kumu or an adult. Or there's the other gamut where they're like too cool for school and they just kind of like, oh, okay, check out, <laughs> right? I mean, I was there in middle school. I know I, I, I definitely remember both. So I think, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that and some of my homana from last year. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing was going, and I wanted to just share this because, you know, as somebody had to kind of adapt to that learning space and then get used to that space of uh, last year, uh, Haole, uh, 2019, um, you know, I have this video and this is just a short video of us, you know, in uh, Keave gym, a gym at the middle school. And I know this was at uh, La Kuokoa last year. So, you know, I mean, from going from a semi to this. <laughs> where we had like 600 people inside the gym or 700, you know, and then even I just wanted to share this video of my hopefully it's not too loud. It's actually, I, I got a video of my students playing a, a, a game, a Quizlet, Quizlet Live. So uh, it's a very short video, but they're kind of, one student kind of screams at the end. So I'm just preparing you if you're wearing uh, headphones. I mean, say if you have a yeah, so, you know, I mean, that's kind of the everyday day of a Kumu, right, if you're in a classroom. And so I just share that just to kind of remember for some of us, uh, some of us to remind us, like, what was it like in a classroom before COVID, right? Because I'm sure that we do sometimes miss, or I, you know, I definitely miss the so, uh, social interactions of being a Kumu and having that and being in a common space like that. So it's definitely was, has been an adaption. <laughs> Wrong arrow button. Um, and then I'm um, going from that to uh, the beginning of spring, pretty much last year. I remember that we uh, scheduled a field trip who, uh, to Paulu uh, Akalana, which is a uh, nonprofit uh, in Kailua, uh, run by my um, one of my friends, Kaleo Wong, uh, a navigator and voyager in Hokulea. And uh, he founded an organization. and. I remember, I think it was the second or first week of March. I got to double check the date, which is on the left side. You know, we were in the Lo'i, right? And uh, we were in the Lo'i when we went on a huaka'i. It was a great huaka'i. It was probably one of my favorite huaka'i that we went on. And then literally two weeks later, then we find out, oh, by the way, we have to shut down school and because COVID, right? And so that, you know, in itself is, is challenging, right, for a lot of us because like I said, you know, we go from working on the Aina or having these huaka'i and having these kilina and then moving towards the right side of the screen, which is what we all kind of ma'atu, some of us, is Zoom, right? And so I'm pretty sure that uh, that was a very big change. And I think the biggest change was for the students, of course, uh, because uh, just understanding if you're, you're a kumu, I, I know you definitely maupopo that. And, especially in like March and April, it was a very like just interesting thing to see like the students uh, kind of adapt to that and really uh, be somewhere very challenged. Uh, somewhere um, they kind of just went into it like it was no big deal. Um, others, you know, had a very more, you know, challenging situation maybe because of family economic reason or health reasons, of course. So, uh, you know, and I, I think that's just part of the journey that we're collectively all in, right? So. Um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of bring that up that within like a month time, it was just like going from the low E and to like, can't, we cannot be near anybody, right? So, um, and then to this year, 
Um, so this year I'm actually on one of the teams specifically designated for distance learning at the middle school, uh, Kawila for eighth grade. Um, and so I think one of the biggest changes that I saw was, or one of my biggest fears was actually going in and trying to figure out how to build Pilina or relationship with the Hamana. Uh, because as you guys saw on the last uh, slides, it was uh, very kind of easy to build upon that because the Kahua was there as a as 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 a teacher that already built Pilina Pilina with them in the classroom, and so now going to just Zoom, uh, it was definitely a challenge in the very beginning. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie about that. I think uh, for us uh, for Kawila, we had about I don't remember the exact number that we started off with, but we had about 97 or 98 Haumana. Uh, and that's collectively from Kauai all the way to Hawaii Island. And uh, it was it was a very different change because now we had to interact with, you know, everybody kind of from all over from the Pai Aina, but then now on, on Zoom, right? And so I think that that was definitely something that for, for me, I had to be very intentional as a Kumu. And I think all of us who are in education right now during this time, uh, really try to build great Pilina with the kids so that way, the class is engaging, that they want to plug in and listen to you, you know, um, the respect is there, it's mutual. Um, I think obviously as a Kumu in the classroom, there's a carrot and a stick, right? Like you can give them candy if they like, you know, if, if they do great, or you can send them to the office if they don't do so great, right? Or uh, they do things that they shouldn't be doing, right? Um, but I think for us, right, as teachers, it's now learning how to manage that without the carrot or the stick, right? <laughs> And I think that that's really the the challenge that we have to we always recognize, right? Is that we have to build great Pilina with the kids on this platform, and then being able to kind of get them to engage and to aloha to us when we're on Zoom. And so, yeah, um, that's kind of that journey. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I recognize that even for me uh, specifically teaching Olalo, I, I teach the first uh, Hawaiian one B or the second half of Hawaiian one at the middle school. Um, What's challenging is uh, for language acquisition, right? It's definitely uh, just like any language is having a kaiaulu or a space where you can practice and feel safe to olalo, right? Um, like in the classroom. So um, yeah, I think that that's definitely that. Um, so I just kind of, in that very beginning, I put all these different, you know, I put Canvas, Zoom, Teams, YouTube, Google Classroom, um, I also put iMovie. Um, I also put a picture of my space that I'm actually sitting in right now. Um, and I think that was like the reality of like being a Kumu, right? Is that we had to learn how to be like a video editor. We had to now become like, I like to say like Jimmy Fallon. We have to be very entertaining on this thing because, you know, as we recognize some kids could be watching YouTube while we're in class, right? And I don't want to admit that, but I recognize that that's a challenge right now that we're dealing with uh, a distance learning program like this. So uh, for the Kumu is really being able to now adapt and be resilient to this kind of uh, all the tools that we have. Um, I know um, I'm very grateful uh, for Kamehameha for allowing us to have the tools and to have the resources to do that. And I recognize that. And I don't, for me as a Pua Pauahi, I don't ever take that for granted and I don't ever want to take that for granted. So I'm very, I, mahalo the institution for providing that for not only me as a Kumu, but also for the Haumana. Um, and just having all that has been a grateful thing. I always kind of, I don't want to say I nuku that. I probably do nuku that. I say that, you know, the laptop you guys have, I mean, definitely it's, it's a gift and cherish it because I don't know a lot of other schools and I do recognize that because Kamehameha Schools is a very um, privileged school in the sense of having a lot of resources. They don't have the ability to send a laptop to you, right, in FedEx, and to be able to have that. And I, I recognize that. So I know I think definitely we should always be grateful for that. I always try to instill that into the Hamana because, um, yeah, I mean, I, I know that that's a lot of challenges that a lot of DOE and a lot of other charter schools and other schools face today. Yeah? Um, so just going over the schedule, uh, this year was a challenge in the sense of we were challenged by our admin to create the schedule in the first quarter. Um, and that was interesting for us because as a team, as uh, somebody that works with a team of teachers, we had to kind of come up with a great system uh, in the first quarter that really kind of helped work for the kids. Um, and I, only, I mean, I'm not gonna go into detail exactly like, you know, line by line about what that looks like, but 
really uh, on the first quarter, some of our ideas that we kind of suggested uh, and that we kind of implemented in the first quarter was having shorter classes, um, having a, uh, obviously, so like if you see Kawila one, two, three, four, five, six, having six different hui was the quarter one reality. Um, and what we found was having shorter classes was sometimes more effective in that way um, because uh, for us, having about 98 plus students, right? Uh, having the teacher-student ratio was something that was very interesting to deal with as a reality on Zoom. Um, so that was something that I know that is a very challenging thing for a lot of teachers is trying to manage the classroom with like all these different blocks in Zoom. So um, that's that's on you know the left side. We really had to kind of think about how to really um, have interventions too with with our uh, with our group of kids because we have a very uh, a vast difference of skills, whether it's reading or writing or math and even Olalo, right? So I'm trying to really think about those ways of how do we engage them and inter have interventions for them. Um, I know at Kapalama, uh, we started a PLC and uh, RTI uh, and having that as a way to making sure that we're able to have those appropriate interventions with the kids. So. Really what we did, uh, what we tried to structure our day was having class in the morning. Um, and then, uh, obviously Pico and advisor in the morning and then we're, they would just go right into class, maybe have a recess and then they would go lunch and then we would have kind of a, a time to check in in the PM block. And that was quarter one. Uh, quarter two and three, because of uh, the system, um, system challenges, I guess that uh, the school had, then it was, what the school wanted to do was to make sure to align the distance learning program and the hybrid program and making sure that that was in sync because even though we were a standalone kind of program in the sense of being distance learning, what was challenging of course was the attendance and was like figuring out when the students are gonna be where and trying to make sure that we had appropriate time to meet as Kumu, so just like every other Kumu deals with in a school. Um, so uh, the, the schedule you see on the right side is the schedule we kind of adapted uh, as a middle school collectively. Um, some of the challenges I, you know, I think that some of us on that team identified was that it was a longer block. So that, that was a good or, you know, maybe a challenging thing. Sometimes a one hour block is kind of a lot for the kids in class because, you know, as you guys can imagine being on this thing for the entire day or for weeks and months on end can be a little bit challenging for the kids and paying attention. Um, so the Kumu, I think, really had to adapt to really making the best use of synchronous time and also having asynchronous tools. So that's kind of what we, uh, what the middle school created. Um, and then also having office hours and, of course, Kulia time, we call it our RTI, uh, intervention block, embedded into it. So that way, if there were things or students we needed to meet with to do study hall or to, you know, to be able to uh, strengthen a skill, then that was something that we could have done, yeah. Um, and so just some of the things uh, I know some of you guys are familiar, of course, with the AOLA Learner Outcome. So that's for uh, us at KS and as a system, a lot of that is attributed to uh, making sure that our content is aligned to that. Uh, specifically for Olelo, uh, one of the things that Olelo uh, is doing at the middle school and even the high school, but I'll speak to the middle school because I teach there, is uh, uh, following the ACTFL standards and making sure that our Olelo is kind of in that in that sense of being um, more so a proficiency uh, rather than just being about um, and really just really focusing on conversations and because ACTFL really is a uh, is, is, is a great standards and and for us to understand how uh, Olelo can be used in communication culture and connections um, but then even for reading, writing, and speaking, and making it very organic, just like how a language, I guess, is learned, rather than maybe being super uh, specific to uh, grammar and um, and all those different skills, which is still important, but that, that's really the, uh, the focus on ACTFL. Okay, so um, I'm going to mahalo uh, Tracy, uh, Tokuhama, because, and of course the school for, uh, I, I did take a, um, uh, I did take a professional le uh, learning class through, this, uh, through the school and one of the classes that they offered was uh, through Tracy Tokuhama and uh, and the reason why I want to uh, bring this up because she really um, in the fall I took her class and then even right now I'm currently enrolled in one of her classes but she really uh, helped me to understand how to kind of navigate this kind of um, uh, this platform and really uh, just being mindful and 
of what is our objectives, right? Identifying, okay, what are we going to teach, right? How do, how do we evaluate, you know, because the reality is we can't evaluate the same way that we did in class, right? You know, being able to uh, evaluate differently, whether it's observation, right? Or through conversations on Zoom now, um, or even maybe uh, just a, a open-ended quiz, right? As opposed to maybe sitting them down and then taking away everything from them and then having them take a traditional test, right? So those are things that I know Kumo are very challenged with during this time. Um, and then on top of that is in planning activities, uh, finding the appropriate activities that complement uh, what is maybe the objectives and how you're going to evaluate. So um, yeah, backward design was something that really helped me to understand that a lot better. And you know, um, and then there was a YouTube video that I know the the admin uh, suggested for us before the school year started. I also got to watch that. It, it's right there in the corner, right? If you're interested in um, checking it out from Tracy. Um, but really, it was just all these things that kind of helped me to understand, okay, that as an educator today, we have tools, right? We have all the resources we have that's available to us, like, like a reference. Then we have to think about the instructional design. We have to think about how is it on this learning platform? Is it complementing the students' learning, right? Is it making it easy for them to access the information? Uh, is it clear, right? All these things that now Kumu have to be mindful of more so than if they did in the classroom, right? Um, even content knowledge, of course, I mean, that doesn't change whether or not you're, I mean, hopefully you're proficient, right, in whatever content that you teach. Um, but all these things, and even, um, I like that you talked about just the mind and uh, brain because of how the brain learns. And uh, because even as, as educators, we have to be mindful that, uh, again, like if we're, teaching, just lecturing the entire time on this thing, it might not be the best use of the time, right? Because they might just, you know, not, they might check out, right? So it's really just being mindful of those things and, and instilling attitudes and knowledge and skills. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so I just wanted to uh, mahalo her because, and she, she uh, graciously let me reference her. I asked her in class yesterday, so yeah. Um, so, you know, I, we use Canvas, and I'm just kind of going to go over some of the tools that I've used for Canvas and some of the things I found success in, uh, in being able to have. Um, and so one of the things that I found is, and I, again, model this also after Tracy's class, is having a discussion um, and having that as a really great way to build Pilina with the kids. I think that was what was uh, really great to do in the very beginning of the year, and I'm still going to do it throughout the year. but. Especially in the beginning was to get the kids to kind of like engage with each other um, and have that. So, you know, creating a discussion, obviously, and being able to really um, have Ha'avina centered around it. So this Ha'avina I had was a Ka'oha assignment. So I had uh, the students, I modeled it like how I wanted it and um, how to actually create it on Canvas. Um, I gave them the directions. I tried to make it super clear. As you guys can see, I highlighted and just to make it very clear of the directions because again I work with middle school kids so sometimes they're not <laughs> they're not the most cognizant of what the directions are so I have to make it super easy and clear and then um and uh yeah so I'm just gonna play this video it just kind of shows a discussion assignment and then uh yeah I gave the directions I know it's crazy and then I also uh I created a slide deck about uh com uh about commands, ka'oha. So if you see the video or the slide deck that I created right there, oh, where is it? Uh, right over here, yeah. So that's me dressing up as a pirate on uh, one of the canoes, Kane Um And uh, so I kind of created a slide deck for them and I wanted them to create uh, command sentences. And so I really wanted to focus on them creating their own and actually doing that. And then they would embed it into the discussion tab. And then what I wanted, oh, sorry. See too many arrows on this thing. Um, and then what I wanted to do was actually have the, the Haumana actually comment on the Havina. So um, other than you know having their peers actually look at their work and actually be able to do that. So I really wanted to focus on, um, you know, as the graphic on the right said, like just really being able to have that skill set of the kids creating and making the language relevant to their life. So, you know, in the I can't really show everybody's one, but you know, and some of it was them talking about them driving um, and then being able to have that, um, you know, or just having experiences of what they do at home 
and then using it in a command sentence. So it is really being relevant to uh, what they're learning and what they're seeing at home, right? Um, another tool that I used on Zoom, I found great was an, an interactive one was uh, using a whiteboard. Uh, in the beginning of the year, I had them, I gave them a vocabulary word and whether or not they knew how to say it or not, I just wanted them to draw it. And then uh, so I used a Zoom uh, feature called whiteboard. You have to, uh, when you share a screen on that um, application, then you should be able to see whiteboard on it. If you don't see it, then you might have to go into your uh, back settings and log in into your browser and then figure out how to do that. And you can Google it. But um, anyway, um, I had them, I'm just going to show this video of, you know, we just think the kids drew something and yeah. Yeah. Like classroom. It's classroom. Not, dude, not classroom. Not classroom. Playground. Playground. Paper, pencil. Playground. It's a test. Is it a test? Playground? Work. Yeah. Yes. More playground, playground. Coffee, I got it. Playground. Recess. Yeah, so I just wanted to show that video. That was a that was a fun activity that we did was having them draw on the whiteboard and then having the other home on our guests. So that was uh, that's a great activity if you guys want to do that um, using Zoom. Because I know Kumo are always looking for activities, but specifically for me because I teach uh, Olalo and I was really getting them to really make the connection between a picture and the word and then being able to kind of remember the picture because I, I try to use as much pictures as I can to get them to remember the Olalo rather than just memorizing the English. But yeah, that's that's the hope. Yeah. Nice. Oh, sorry. Um, you know, another thing I adopted and of, of course we, we use Cav, uh, Canvas as you guys realize the learning management system and um, something that I really embedded was actually having uh, just short formative uh, quizzes, five questions each. It's not too long. Um, and it's open book, but I really tried to assign it in the beginning of the week. And then that way they could know like, oh, this is what they're gonna learn. Uh, even if they don't know it or not, they can click through it and at least they get ma'a to seeing it first. So I think that was something that I realized is, is a really great way to uh, just check, you know, and um, it's easy, it's not high stakes, but at least for them, like they can go through it and you know it's not gonna like be a SAT test, right? But then they can kind of go through it and like, oh, okay, at least looking at the content and be very familiar with, okay, this is what a the sentence means, or I make I usually make it multiple choice, but sometimes I did a short answer. So, uh, yeah, I used quizzes. Um, oh, forgot I made this a video. By the way, if you didn't know, if you have a Mac computer, um, if you do commands, oh wait, there I have it right there. See, maybe that's why I still kept it and didn't edit the video. Uh, you can actually do Command Shift Five, and you can screen record your uh, screen. If you didn't know that, so if you can see in the video right there, you can see the little tab right there. So I don't know if you guys want to do that, but I mean, basically you can screen record, and um, that's a way that Apple, specifically Apple, not PC, sorry, that they embed into their application or their computers that they can you can screen record too. So just like on your phone, if you have an iPhone, I know a lot of people are familiar with that, but just in case you didn't know, you can screen record on your um, Apple. Um, you know, gamification, I think is important. Um, as you guys kind of saw, I did a, uh, I had them uh, draw pictures. So I also try to use Quizlet Live or, or Quizlet. It's a great uh, application. I know a lot of Kumo are familiar with Quiz, uh, Quizlet um, because they can, you can make flashcards with it. Uh, so for me specifically for Olalo, I have them create either packets or I can create the packet for them if you have the account. Um, of course, every, I know every Kumu nowadays is using Kahoot or Quizzes is another one that uh, I haven't used too much. I used it last year, but I'm gonna try to use do one activity with Quizzes this year. Um, so yeah, just different tools, online tools that you can use. Uh, I found that the kids, as you guys know, uh, they love competition. Uh, they love screaming, <laughs> so they like, as you guys saw in the classroom, they, that still doesn't change, I think, with a uh, with a person. And so I think that that is uh, definitely uh, something that, you know, I, I try to be mindful of and have engaging activities like that for the kids. Um, something I did comment to um, last week or a few weeks ago is, you know, I love to see more Olala Hawaii uh, games in, in terms of that kind of platform, being able to take advantage of maybe even having a video game in Olalo. And I know some people have their opinions about video games, but I find that the, the kids, they really engage in that kind of world. And um, and uh, yeah, so that's that I think would be a very useful tool in the future for 
a brilliant Hawaiian to create and then be able for us to really use that at the eighth grade or high school level too. So um, yeah, I mean, but there's other options. I know uh, different Kumu use different uh, platforms that are currently there either through Microsoft or different things. But yeah, I just kind of want to speak, speak to that. I put a picture of like a email Loa'a. So I kind of had them do like a scavenger hunt at home uh, with a group. So I would put them in breakout rooms and kind of have them like go around their house or obviously it's in Olalo, so they would have to go and find it and then you would get a point for it and it would show it in front of the camera. So a ki'i o ikikahi o, yeah, so go find a, go find a fork or a ki'i o ikikahi mea ula ula. If you go grab something that's red, you get one point, one kill, right? Or a ki'i o ikikahi mea poi poi, yeah. So, you know, just finding different ways to engage them and getting them off this laptop and maybe going and kind of doing that. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's something that I found that was great is, is being mindful and having gamification embedded into the classroom. Um, I just kind of speak to the instructional design as you guys kind of maybe I saw on Canvas. Like uh, again, like I kind of mentioned, I think what I found valuable is uh, because we're on this online platform, we can take use of the asynchronous tools that are available to us which is uh, for me, I actually, what I did was I recorded the video of, of a short lesson <laughs> of a two, three minute Elua Ekoluma Minuke uh, lesson. And I had them watch it before class. Um, and what was useful was having a block before that, which is uh, Kumo Mel's study hall class, which is our study skills, excuse me, that really helped to get the kids to watch it before coming to class. Um, something that we talked about in Tracy's class is how you get kids if you flip the classroom and do videos, how do you get them to watch it? I think it's really um, embedding it in a way that actually gets them to uh, maybe they, you can embed questions in the videos. That's uh, that's an application I saw that works is you can put questions in videos and getting the kids to stop and, and answer it. And then you can give them credit for that, right? So that way uh, the kids know that if they don't watch the video, then they don't get points for it. And if they don't watch the video, then they don't, um, they don't thrive in the classroom as much, right? So it's kind of thinking about it in that way. So I did make like really short video lessons about like a, a sentence pattern. Um, and then try to make announcements. So that way the announcements were very uh, like in the beginning of the week, they would look, they would see the assignment. Uh, they would see like what it, uh, what it entailed and then it also allowed them to see um, the videos as well. So, you know, I think that uh, I only, I really got that idea again from how Tracy really kind of designed that and really made it easy and accessible for when I was or still am in my in, in her class. So I uh, just wanted to say that um, one other thing I like to do, especially because Olalo and then making sure that the kids are there and engaging because I know definitely the challenge with a lot of our Kumu is that it's like, are, are they even like paying attention right now or are they like watching like, I don't know, they're, they're watching uh, Mandalorian or Disney Plus in the background. So. I think that that's something that um, I try to really be mindful of how to keep their attention. And so for me specifically, I actually credit their active participation. And uh, how do I do that is I actually either create exit tickets. So like I created an exit ticket on the left side um, that they had to kind of complete before the end of class. And I know a lot of Kumo do that. And um, or I also use the chat as a way of them engaging in class. So I would pose a question to them. And then they would respond in the chat. And I know, you know, a lot of Kumu use that tool, but I specifically would give them credit for participating in chat um, in in the class. So that way, they when they came to class, it wasn't just checking in and then they weren't paying attention, but they were actually having to uh, have engagement and actually participate. And I would credit them. Um, something cool, if you didn't know about Zoom, is that you can save the chat if you set up your uh, settings correctly, um, and then you can always go back and look at who participated and who didn't and all of that. So that's that's a great feature. I like to go back and look at who participated and who wasn't. And then it's also a great way to remember about attendance too. So that's that's something that is um, available. Um, oh yeah, I mean, see, I made a video this morning. Uh, yeah, so like that. So, you know, these are just pictures of how I got them to engage using active participation. Um, so like one in the beginning of class, I usually pose them a question of and then I would have them, uh, I would ask in Olalo o Okala, Eva o Pepe Luali, o Kapoahia Keia. So I would ask them a question and prompting them in Olalo, and then I would ask them to pane mai i, uh, i ka Olalo Hawaii uh, i ka chat. 
So then they would respond in the chat or okala or okapo poalua teia. So on the 9th of February, what day is it? It's a Tuesday. So I would kind of ask them and then they would write in the chat. I eventually right now want to move towards after getting their ma'a to feeling comfortable that they can respond, at least in the chat, is to actually get them to speak in class. So that's kind of what I moved towards now with this quarter because I wanted to establish the kahua first and not like stare them immediately and get them to talk. <laughs> Because I know that's a challenge for eighth grade students is, again, they don't want to be the cool guy or girl on this thing. And so trying to get them to really be uh, comfortable speaking for one and feeling safe that they can fail or learn, right? Uh, so, and then I try to move towards more uh, modeling conversations or kama ilio for the haumana. So that way they could hear me say it and then I would call in the students and then they would say it too. And um, some some students, as we know, they're, they're more ma'a to this and they're they're okay talking. Other ones, they're very more fearful of it. And of course, they get the social anxiety. So it's really, I think it's how you build the filina and the environment in class. So, um, and then I think this is one of the last few things um, is that I I think, and again, learned this uh, from uh, other great Kumu and other people who are using uh, bundles and playlists and um, just really being able to have bundles and different uh, student choices for kids to actually explore and then to complete their assignment I found is a great way to uh, allow students to have that space and then be able to learn differently. So if you can see on the left side our uh, content for Olelo created this one playlist uh, just being able to see the standard and then the learning target and then the Ha'avina or the assignment that you know is required for that and then uh, where they would go to click and do it and of course the directions of how to turn it in so like a student would see this playlist and then they could actually pick from this playlist like what assignment they wanted to do for that one you know um thing for the grade book so that was something i i found is great for student choice because some students they might not want to do uh express themselves in a certain way some people like melee right art um they like reading writing or being able to do a hot yolalo so kind of creating that so that way there that allows them that and I also just showed this other bundle that I know um, some of the learning and innovation coaches created at the middle school which is something that I know we use as kumu but just being able to have like that is is just great on a, on, on a worksheet so yeah and then um, that I think allows to differentiate and allows people or homana to have the ability so I, I kind of had a picture of them drawing papani or pronouns in a level I had an, I have a video of Blake um, uh, talking about what he uh, learned, and then I also had a palette. So those are just some things that being able to allow for differentiation. Um, yeah, and so I know kind of close to our time, and so I uh, just want to be mindful. I, I wanted to close with this picture of Hokulea. I was uh, grateful I got to go down there about two weeks ago, uh, actually last week too. I um, mean, if you're not, um, if you don't know, Hokulea uh, is in dry dock right now. So I've been going down and helping with the dry dock when I can. And I think this is a good image of what it's like being a Kumu right now. It's uh, putting the canoe together. And then, you know, I wish I got a picture of it, sa of Hoku sailing, but it's like putting the canoe together and sailing it at the same time. <laughs> and so I feel like that's a very appropriate picture to end off with because definitely as educators, I feel like we're doing that, right? As trying to put this, canoe together, get everybody on the canoe and be, you know, moving in the same direction and then having our crewmates, our other Kumu and staff and everybody to support. And um, yeah, so that's kind of, I think, what it looks like. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing because I know we're almost at time. And uh, yeah, I hope that <laughs> That wasn't too overwhelming and you guys are still with me. It kind of went like full speed ahead, but I know I only had so much time, but yeah. Kumu, uh, Kaivi. Yes. There are a few questions. Okay. Uh, Elena had a question. Okay. Uh, she had a few questions actually. Aloha Kaivi, it's in the, I put it in our text chat too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so one question she had was, do you record classes so absent students can view the lessons? I think you addressed that, yeah? Yeah, uh, so for, for the most part, I would, I will uh, do my best to record it because I definitely 
sometimes I honestly do forget because, you know, you just kind of get into it and like, oh my gosh, I forgot to record class. So I would try my best to record it. And then that way it allows the student to, re to view it. But you know what I really found useful was actually having the announcements and actually having um, everything kind of like having a pre video. So that way the student could actually be able to um, have that space to go back anytime without being in class. Not saying that I don't value them being in class, but I kind of made it the, the announcements in a way and all that in a way and having the notes in there so that way they could easily refer back to it without because I, I, I know the reality of the kids is that they don't necessarily watch the 40 minute class, right? If I even recorded it. So that's kind of what I, how I also kind of went through that way. Yeah. Um, and then another question she had was, how do you view the camera on, camera off debate? Do you require students to keep their cameras on? Yeah, that, that goes part into uh, student expectations. So I think uh, I didn't really talk about that as much, but I think that was something that we as a group as of Kumu actually did that is we had to set uh, expectation for our Haumana. And that was actually one of the expectations was that they actually had their video on and that they were present. Um, uh, we, you know, with that said, and the caveat to that is we do recognize because of the population that we serve and them being, you know, I have I have students raising, you know, having their baby sister in their in their arms in class, right? Or I have like kids, you know, dads over there working on the house, <laughs> right? and we all know that, right? And so, uh, if they have challenges or things obviously at home going on, then we're we're more than willing to work with them through that way. But uh, for the most part, we try to have an expectation that hey, if we're expected to be, to be here, then you're expected. So, um, yeah, that's how we get the kids to actually do that because collectively we kind of set the expectation. And then three more questions. The first one is oral practice and feedback is such a challenge. Have you tried having them record themselves on flip, speaking on Flipgrid or doing slide presentations in small groups? Yeah, um, something I started doing this quarter because I got them to really get ma'a finally to get um, actually talking and feeling comfortable making mistakes and you know actually sh uh, sharing is uh, having like a very short uh, hot yola lower presentation. So I'd have them like, again, create a slide, like what they did during winter break. And then they would have like a three slide deck on Google Classroom and then they would share about what they uh, what they did using an Olalo pattern. And then they would just do that and it would be very simple. So I would kind of have a very short way of doing that. And then that way it kind of got through their class within the week where, where it wasn't like a 10 minute hot yola low and then I couldn't get through all of them. So I think that's kind of why I did that. And then I also have them record uh, certain uh, assignments on um, Canvas or Flipgrid, but I've used Canvas more because I can use, uh, I can give the grade on Canvas. I don't have to go to Flipgrid to another link and then look and then open up another window and then open up three other windows. So that's why I kind of had it on Canvas because we were fortunate to use that. Mahalo. Uh, real quick, we have a couple minutes left. So I'm just going to uh, share the two questions. One was just actually a request. Can you share a little bit about the engagement of Hamana with the playlist? And the other one was, how do you folks go about with sharing specific contents using your slides presentations because of copyright laws? Um, with regards to the first question, sorry, can I go over the first question? Yeah, <laughs> uh, playlist. The, first, the playlist, yeah. So um, I think that that definitely was something that I know the students appreciate and I, I actually think that they get they connect more to things that they are passionate about and allowing them that space to do that is is vai vai. Um, and I think that that was very uh, that's something that I try to be mindful of because even me learning Olalo um, the way I did or even having being passionate about certain things about voyaging right I could just focus it about the canoe, but then the kid that doesn't even maybe not have any relevance to the ocean, they might not care. So I think that that was really great. The only thing is that it definitely does take mindful time. I mean, it's not something that is you can just pull it off in a whim. So, yeah. Um, and in regards to the, uh, what was the second question? Follow me. How do you folks go about uh, with sharing specific contents using your slides presentations because of copyright laws? Um, but specifically content, um, so a lot of the content that I, I use specifically is either educational resources or things already that's already available to the public uh, or I create it myself so that way um, you know I'm not just taking anybody's stuff. Especially when I go like my videos I don't 
use anybody else's to teach my uh, my class. So I kind of just stick to what I can do. And then if some MS schools allows us different resources and different tools to use, then I try to use that as well. Okay, Mahal, we're out of, we're out of, um, we're done with our session, but there's one more question might be you might be able to answer it quickly. Do you find that there is any part of your curriculum that you just can't tra that you just can't translate or can't teach in this virtual setting? Um, oh, that's a good question. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm always mindful of that, and I always tell the kids this, is that I don't want them to be at the Luau one day post COVID and then not know how to greet anybody, right? And not, not know how to have that human to human kanaka to kanaka interaction. Because I think already the kids are challenged in that place to like be mindful of like, hey, go aloha auntie at the party, right? You got to kind of get them off their iPad and go drag them over there, go do that, right? So I think that that's something that I think even after COVID, we got to be very mindful of how to kind of continue to enforce that, especially as Hawaiians. That, that's something I know that we thrive on is having that interaction and aloha, right, with each other. So, yeah. Mahalo nui ka iwi, and thank you so much for your presentation today. I know that many of us here can actually connect with some of your challenges and your struggles, and you gave us a lot of great suggestions and ideas and ways that we can explore more. Um, I even think you may have given us some more language of, of things we can actually search for and planning and preparing for our um, classes and our sessions. So mahalo nui. Uh, thank you attendees for joining us. Um, I'm sure Ka'ivi um, is available for more questions if possible. Um, this, this chat room can still be open for a little while. However, we are going to share the link to the next session, which will be open in about eight minutes. Actually, no, it's the cooking session. So if you guys are going to go to uh, watch the lunch, uh, the Ain Avakea session that will be coming up. And then following that will be the session three series. Um, so please um, find your way to your next sessions. Um, please engage with Ka'ivi if you have any more questions. That's also an option. Um, and then I hope to see each of you in another session this afternoon. So mahalo nui and have a, a great day.